How do we accelerate this? How do we keep our foot on the gas pedal? Well, first of all, it is true that businesses have been doing much more over the last 18 months, two years, than we've ever expected them to do before. One does have to say that. With the support of trades unions and, and other organisations, it is very noticeable that the, uh, that the whole system is being driven by businesses in many areas. And uh, I'm, that's not just because we advise Tesco, I'm pleased to say, and therefore the comments made about Tesco we're very pleased about. But the fact is, businesses from right across the world, from, from Coca-Cola at one end to uh, 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 Kellogg's and to others, I mean, are, are really taking these things seriously. I just think there is a first thing we have to do, and that is to keep their feet to the fire. And one of the things we can all do is, first of all, to say thank you when they do things properly. I think we've got to become much more grateful for when things go well. There is nothing that encourages people to do more than when people say, I see you were doing that, I'm pleased about that, that's a very good thing. And I'm afraid we're not very good at saying thank you. Gratitude is a very important driver. And if climate uh, uh, week can, in fact, help a lot of people to say thank you, it also gives them the perfectly proper excuse for saying, what the blazes do you think you're doing doing this? And I think it's terribly important to do both of those, a real pressure on business, so that people can recognise at every level of business that the reputation uh, of their company really does depend upon getting this right. And that a company that doesn't take seriously climate change really isn't a company which is going to galvanise the uh, next generation. Now, my experience of it, of course, is that forward-looking companies really do understand that. I mean, the statements of Mutar Kent by, on Coca-Cola as far as climate change are concerned are really outstanding, and he has driven that. And if you see in the United States now, they are characterising it by having white tins and, uh, and producing a new home for the polar bears because of the breaking up of the ice. Well, nothing breaks through the cynicism of the Republican Party than when people really realise what is actually happening. So you don't talk about climate change. What you talk about is polar bears sinking because there's nowhere for them to stand. And, and that kind of practical activity, which is commercially very sensible because it really links them with their, their new generation, is exactly exactly what business ought to be doing, and we can help that by saying, think, I mean, I'd like to see a lot of people who drink Coke to say to Coke, why haven't we got it in Britain yet? Uh, why isn't it here? Because we're just as interested. We want, we want it as well. We, we want to make this point very strong. So that's from business. As far as government's concerned, um, again, I do think that the point that you made, Mr Chairman, about the difficulty in the news is the thing that makes it very hard for government. Because if there is no concentration on climate change in the world out there, and you're trying to deal with the euro, and you're trying to sort out uh, uh, threatened public sector strikes, and you're trying to deal with the fact that we really can't pay our way, and you've got all those things to happen, it's not very difficult to see why things slip down your immediate demand. It is very hard. Now, the only way you can help that is actually to pressurise government. And I know it sounds um, uh, kind of uh, uh, folksy, but I really do think it's terribly important. I got, when I was a Member of Parliament, got very few letters from people to say thank you, and very few letters that pushed me, except when there was a campaign on. Now, what I think Climate Change Week, Climate Week can actually do is to get people to realise that their commitment has to be communicated to the people who then begin to feel, well, I've either got to get this right or I'm going to be in trouble. And I think everybody here ought to set their sights at ensuring that at least five letters a week go to members of parliament. From you, from your friends, from everybody else, it makes a huge difference. Not a written letter, not one of those dreadful cards from Friends of the Earth which you sign at the bottom. And, 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 I, don't, I don't mind that because you get a pile like this and they all get a, a, an email response and you haven't really achieved anything, if I may say so. But, but, a, per, but, a, but, a, but a person, well of course when you're running a climate change act it was wonderful and we all enjoyed doing that together and it was a huge success. But in general, if every week members of parliament receive letters from individual constituents which are written by them, maybe not terribly well spelt, maybe not quite getting the right end of the stick, but talking about climate, then in fact you get a fear that, fear that if I don't do something about this, if I don't take this seriously, then I really am going to be in trouble. And I think that's a tremendously important thing. The last thing I want to say is um, the government increasingly, uh, and uh, organisations, particularly businesses, are hugely affected by the internet. 
And I've spent the last week purposely doing more trawling on the internet than I've ever done before, just simply reading stuff right across the board. Now, let me just put this to you. Everybody here has another interest apart from climate. It may only be a little bit of life, but you've got another interest. Mm -hmm. You ought to take the blogs which relate to your interest and make sure that at least once a week you're putting something on that blog about climate change. I happen to be a Catholic, so I look at all the Catholic blogs and you'll find that a whole lot of Catholic blogs get bits about the climate change which I put on. And I make sure that anybody who might write something silly about climate on the Catholic blogs get an answer. And I do that all the time. And it doesn't take a lot of time. I know which ones are the ones where this may come up. And I do that bit because that's a passion of mine. Now, other people have got all sorts of other passions. Um, and no matter what you are and where you are, you should take to your heart that other passion and use it as a means of constantly reminding people. Because the trick of our opponents is very simple. It is. Climate is going down the agenda. People have got other things to worry about. We've got time to think about climate change. We've really got to concern ourselves about the euro. Anyway, we're not quite sure. If we concentrate on the things that we're sure, then surely it's better to leave the things that we're not sure about until afterwards. That's how they do it. And you've got to respond to that on all those documents. And the last thing is a comment that was made earlier on, a comment you made about risk. You said the, our own assessment of risk. Actually, that's not the key thing. The best way to deal with it is what is our assessment of risk for others? What are we prepared to risk for our children? And once you say that, then you have a wholly different view. Mm. Once you say, what am I prepared to risk for my children? I don't want to raise an old story, but when I wanted to show people that I really <laughs> believed, that I really believed that meat was safe, there is only one way of showing it, actually. When somebody says to you, will you let your child eat a hamburger, if you say no, they know you don't believe. If you say yes, they know, may not like it, they may be upset, but they know that what you're saying is what you truly in your heart believes. And I think that's the thing we've got to do. We've got to show that we really believe it and that it matters and that we're not going to let people think about risk just for themselves.